Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice equation with complex numbers. We have z to the power i equals negative 1 and we're going to be solving for z values. z is a complex number, i is a complex number, i is actually an imaginary number as well. If you don't know what it is, i is the square root of negative 1 you can also express it as i squared equals negative 1. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, CyberMath, Cyber with an S. Great, so let's get started. To be able to solve this equation, we're going to need to use the exponential form. What is the exponential form or the polar form of a complex number? Thanks to Euler, we're able to write a complex number as follows. z equals r e to the i theta. Let's go ahead and break it down. r is the modulus or the absolute value of a complex number. Again, I go over these in detail in lecture notes, I mean videos. And theta is the argument or the angle. So we can basically plot a complex number in the complex plane, which is also called the argand plane. So complex numbers are represented by points or vectors. And this is the real axis. This is the imaginary axis. And of course, there is going to be a distance from zero, which is denoted by R. And the angle in the positive direction, which is counterclockwise, by the way, is theta. So that's how we measure theta. But one thing about theta is that if you add 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi to it, including subtractions, then you get the same angle but it looks different, okay? So, how do we use this information, though? Or what does this represent? R e to the i theta, right? Let's go ahead and write Euler's formula, which also brings us the most beautiful equation in math. So, e to the i theta can be expressed as cosine theta plus i sine theta. So, whenever you have a complex number, you can express it this way, which is a really nice way to do it because it's exponential, so you can easily multiply them, divide them. Addition and subtraction isn't that easy. It's better if you do it in the standard form. And standard form of a complex number is when you write it as a plus bi, which is also the name of this channel. Hopefully you remember that, right? Great, so let's go ahead and see how we can turn this equation into something manageable. So our idea, our goal is always to write something as an exponential, where e is the base. e is Euler's number, by the way, which is rightfully so, right? And it's about 2.7. So whenever you have a number like z to the power w, you can write it as e to the power w ln z. If you think about it, this kind of makes sense because we could also probably express this at e to the power ln z to the w, and any time you have e to the power ln something, that'll be the answer, right? But anyways, you can just memorize it like that and use it that way. So what this does is changes the base, kind of like a change of base formula, but not with logarithms, with the complex numbers and the exponential function, okay? So one thing to keep in mind, though, how do you find ln of a complex number? So when it comes to ln of a complex number, since z can be written as r e to the i theta, then ln z can be expressed as ln r plus i theta. But here's a couple things you need to be careful about. First of all, ln r is a real valued ln. That's why a lot of times people are going to write this as log instead of ln, because that's a complex logarithm. I usually write it as an ln. I don't know if it's a big crime, but that's what I usually do. So this is the complex logarithm. This is a real valued logarithm. So r needs to be greater than zero. So if r is zero, this is meaningless because zero is just zero, right? There's no reason. You can't log it, in other words. So what about theta? Since we already said you're allowed to add multiples of theta, if this is the principal argument, which is usually the smallest angle between negative pi and pi, then you can just write it that way. But you're also allowed to add multiples of 2 pi, which is something we're going to take care of. Okay? So, and let me not confuse you. Just keep it as ln z for now because I wrote it as ln z. Now we can go ahead and replace 
z with ln z with that, which is going to give us ln r plus i theta. So once you find r and theta, and if you know w, you should be able to do this. In our expression, w is equal to i, so that's what you need to find. For so z is going to be z, and w is i, right? So since w is i, how do you write this, right? So that's what we need uh, to basically write it as follows. z to the power i equals e to the power i ln z, which is e to the power i times ln r plus i theta. Let's not get confused here. This r is for z, okay? And we don't know what z is, do we? Actually, z to the power, w, wait, a, wait a minute, I'm confusing myself. e to the power, i ln z, yeah, that, that, that seems correct. Anyways, okay, okay, that makes sense, hopefully. So this is what I have on the left-hand side. What about the right-hand side? I also need to polarize it, right? Kind of write in polar form, I mean. So negative one, if you think about negative one, on the coordinate plane, it's going to be right here. And it's going to make an angle of pi radians. Of course, pi is the principal argument in this case, or maybe we should use negative pi. I can't remember which one is included, but I think it's the negative pi. But let's write it as pi. So we can write it as e to the power i pi. Since its modulus is one unit, we don't need to include it. So now we can go ahead and replace negative one with that on the right hand side. Put these together. e to the power i times ln r plus i theta. By the way, I don't think you need this. You can just use ln z for now because our goal is to solve for z, remember? So we can kind of write it like this, can't we? All right, this should be good. But again, to cover the ground, we probably need to write uh, maybe something like this. Add multiples of 2 pi so that we can represent all solutions. Make sense? Now, since we have e as on, e's on both sides, we can go ahead and natural log both sides, and that will give us i ln z equals i times pi plus 2 pi n. And then i cancels out, it's not zero, and we end up with ln z. But we're not looking for ln z, we're looking for z, and we know that z is equal to e to the power ln z, right? So z would be e to the power pi plus 2 pi n right? That should be the answer for z, but let's go ahead and also check what we get from Wolfram Alpha. I think I included the results here, so we can check our work. Hopefully, we didn't make any mistakes. Okay. So, let's go ahead and check our answers with Wolfram Alpha. Here we go. Ta -da -da -da. As you can see, z can be expressed as e to the power 2 pi n plus pi, which is the same thing that we got slightly different looking, but it's the same idea. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI, and bye-bye.